going back to 2007, uh, the original release date for Command of Europe at War. And if we think about what kinds of war games, and more specifically World War II grand strategy war games, were available and ready to play at that time, typically it, it, it required a lot of time on your part. It, it required you to play for weeks, if not months. And what Commander did was it brought you a grand strategy game, which was kind of unique at the time that um, simplified a lot of the gameplay. It simplified the, the rules, it simplified the combat, it simplified the supply. Uh, it presented a slightly smaller map, uh, lower unit density, but while still retaining all the key elements you would expect from a grand strategy game. You still had control over your production, you still had control over research, you still had control over your armies and your direction of your grand strategy, uh, you know, as you saw fit. And also unique at the time was it, it was a good looking game. I mean, it, it had a very clean interface. It had, uh, and, and we're talking relative to the other war games available at that time. Uh, clean interface, a good looking map. It had uh, nicely rendered 2D unit models and all of that made it a little bit different, but also very fun to play. And as a result, it, it developed quite the following and a significant fan base. And for Slytherin, it was also um, a place of significance for them as well, because it was early days of Slytherin and it was one of its first commercial hits. So it was a kind of game that there was some talk and discussion about revisiting and looking at it again in terms of all the development that have since achieved, that we've since achieved since 2007, how could we incorporate that into this classically concept game and make it the kind of game that was fun to play back then would be equally fun to play today. The original game used a 2D graphics engine and while it looked great for its time, uh, it's not 2007 anymore and everybody wanted to uh, bring the game up to speed and because of that, we're, we're reintroducing the game using a 3D graphics engine. Players can expect to see a beautifully rendered 3D map for this game, uh, full 3D models for every model, for every unit model and country, uh, and significant control over how we present the game to the player. Like zooming in and out is gonna be very smooth and easy uh, with a lot of levels of zoom. We can tilt the map, uh, it, essentially, it's it's a significant jump in look and feel and uh, presentation capability that we're bringing to the players uh, with this new version of the game. Previously, the game had very limited events, uh, things like the Soviet winter, partisans, and things were more or less fixed on, on in terms of timeline. So you could expect to be uh, invading the USSR on June 22nd, 1941. You could expect uh, the United States to enter the war on December 7th, 1941. And what we wanted to do was um, update some of that by just having a slightly more flexible event system, uh, a little bit more uh, cause and effect in game. So depending on how you play the game, some of those uh, entry dates, let's say for example, um, could be influenced you know maybe a country might enter a little bit earlier a little bit later um the, the original game didn't have really any type of uh, diplomatic influence that's something that we also wanted to introduce in the new game and just by adding a few more events and a few more um events such as decision type events that would present the player with some pros and cons uh, we just felt it was it was time to uh, upgrade that part of the game to just make it a little bit more interesting and and just have um, actions and reactions in the game be sort of tied into how the player is playing the game and some of the decisions that they're making. So not everything was just sort of set in stone as it was. In terms of faithfulness to the original, this was uh, something that we discussed as we uh, proceeded with the development of the uh, of the remake and and it was a bit of a priority we really wanted to make sure that players and especially those that had played the original game uh, would feel right at home that they would pick up this game and feel like this is a true remake of the original version of commander europe at war 
players can expect to see um, manpower, oil, rail movements, uh, the research labs that cover the land, sea, and air categories. Uh, they, they're still going to see the simplified combat and supply rules, as well as the simplified unit types, such as the uh, infantry, tanks, fighters, uh, and so on. One of the unique elements of Commander, in fact, an iconic em element of uh, the original Commander game, was the ability to assign uh, commanders to specific units on the map. And what that did was it improved those units. It, it either gave them improved combat ability or perhaps uh, uh, increased uh, movement uh, for their movement range on the map. And and this was the uh, this is what kind of made Commander a little bit special. So just the idea of different commanders with different abilities and. And for each nation, this was this, there was some variation, and, and that would kind of um, make the gameplay a little bit more fun and interesting when you were trying to pit unit types against other unit types with uh, the different commanders and their abilities, and, and you know see who prevail. And whether this was going to be included or not was never a question. Uh, it, absolutely, it's uh, it's a big part of the game, and uh, we look forward to uh, having it. As, uh, in terms of user interface and user experience, um, expect a significant jump. Uh, the original game, again, 2007, uh, was a 2D game, and it was fixed at uh, 1,024 by 768 pixels, which is a rather small gameplay window size. Uh, it limited the amount of um, map area you could see. Uh, it was limited to, at the default zoom, to about 18 hexes wide by 10 hexes tall. And even though the interface was a good looking interface, because it was such a small window, uh, a lot of the interface was essentially uh, designed with uh, kind of an overlapping design uh, in mind. So in order to make everything work, so you would kind of only see so much on screen and if you want to dig a little further, uh, let's say in terms of unit stats or some of the country stats, you'd have to actually kind of, you know, click through on the fixed window to get to see everything at any one time. And with the new game, um, there's no there's no real limitation on the screen size. We fully support regular uh, resolutions uh, up to 2K, up to 4K, as well as ultra wide. Um, 2k or 4k so on a ultra wide uh, monitor that's about 5,000 pixels wide uh, you're you can expect to have uh, and and the game map will fill the entire monitor at, at that many pixels uh, you can see uh, depending on what zoom level you're at anywhere between 60 to 80 hexes wide and so you're, you're gonna see a lot more of the map uh, and that's a nice option to have because it just makes the gameplay that much better the more you can see and you know the, the bigger of the picture that you can make out of the game and in terms of uh, handling the different resolutions um, one of the nice things about uh, the 3d engine that we're using uh, the Archon uh, Slytherin in-house game engine is it is fully adaptable at those different resolutions so everything will scale You'll have uh, a scaled interface, you'll have scaled fonts. Uh, it's, it's a nice jump and an improvement over the old game, as well as uh, some of the other uh, games that don't handle that as well. So you, you can quite often have a jump in resolution, but you know the fonts will look very small or the interface will look too small because it, it was sort of still fixed for a smaller resolution. Definitely expect to see a significant improvement in terms of uh, user interface and uh, user experience with, with this new version of the game. On the AI side of things, uh, you know, the original game played fine, but it, it's been some time and, you know, even on our own end, we've had um, several decades of AI development uh, that we can bring to Commander um, that we look forward to bringing to the game. I mean, we have, uh, we have developed uh, quite a bit of AI over those years and uh, quite a few in-house tools that enable us to uh, refine and uh, present an optimal AI and gameplay experience for players. So we, you know, we, we can uh, run a num any number of AI versus AI 
uh, in-house tests. Uh, we have a lot of um, feedback that is presented to us from those tests, uh, data that is uh, outputted, and that gives us the ability to uh, run any number of iterations uh, of the AI and review um, the weaknesses and highlight where we need to improve and essentially bring uh, as, as ideal an experience uh, versus the AI that, that, that players can expect. And, and at the difficult levels, uh, you expect to have a very challenging game. Just to conclude, uh, as a development team, we're very excited about bringing this new version of Commander Europe at War to everyone and to expect the new game by middle of next year. Uh, it'll be on Steam, it'll be on uh, the Slytherin website as well as other third-party sellers. And to please visit those websites and look for any updates as we uh, continue development uh, to also be able to follow the game, to add it to your wish lists. And uh, we sincerely hope that everyone uh, enjoys the game as much as uh, we did in uh, developing it.